All right, folks, in this video here from Top Comics Pressing, we're going to go over one of the key techniques from the comic book stain removal and whitening book. And so this is going to be your core resource before I actually show you how to do the blue LED overlay, or at least how I do the blue LED overlay. What I encourage you to do is to get the book, make sure you're checking it out. This is the reference I use. Uh, the team put a lot of effort into making sure that the instructions here were very clear and really providing a lot of supplemental information as to what different stains on different comic books look like and what sorts of, uh, you know, things you should probably, um, you know, avoid trying to do a stain removal on and what kinds of things you can successfully do a stain removal on. So very uh, key resource there. And the blue light, the blue LED overlay, I think is going to be one of the more powerful techniques from the book. And so check it out right now. All right, folks, a lot of people have asked for this one. So here is a demo on how I set up my blue LED overlays. Um, we're going to have an example here with a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 316. This thing's never going to be a 9.8. There's a, a clear color break down here at the corner, and there's some edge wear here and a number of spine ticks. Uh, I got this comic at a local comic shop because, frankly, it looked awful. Uh, you can tell from the front cover here that this thing already has our characteristic shimmer and wrinkle. I've already treated the front. So the outside and the interior of the front look pretty nice and respectable. Uh, the back cover though looks gross yet. Uh, and so I stopped this halfway so you could kind of see the compare and the contrast. Um, you know, if you look up here, it is quite yellowed and you can compare that directly to the one, uh, y you know, that I've treated. And so you can get a pretty clear side by side. Um, you can also, you know, compare kind of just the the dinge and, and din, you know yellowness in there compared to how bright and shiny venom looks particularly up there and down in the upc and of course in spidey's eyes and so this one you know already got four exterior treatments and three um interior treatments and the inner front cover. So I use CGC trays for manipulating comics into the box. So I crack enough of these slabs where I've got them. Uh, and I set them up then with a sheet of just regular paper on there. It's only happened to me once, but I did accidentally stick a comic to the CGC slab. I'm not sure how exactly that happened, but it was quite tragic. So we want to avoid that. So I'm just going to set this up off of line of sight. And uh, you can see here the kind of paper that I'm going to use in this demo is uh, Staple Store Brand True Red. Um, you know, people ask me what kind of paper I use, and the honest answer is it doesn't really matter because it varies region to region and sometimes even order to order. So I used to get Amazon Basic paper, but sometimes it would be a different paper than, than what I would get before. So, you know, however they bundle the, the bulk store brands or whatever, it does seem to make quite a bit of a difference in terms of how they react to these processes. So this is a brand new sheet of paper. And what I wanna show you is uh, probably the biggest problem I had when figuring this out. And so if I just miss this thing here, uh, saturate it, you'll notice uh, first off, it's not uh, absorbing evenly throughout that paper. And secondly, if we pick this up and look at it, you can see in the glare there that it is kind of beating up on the surface. So if you see that beating up and pooling, um, that's a really bad sign and you want to avoid that. The reason is that you're gonna have an unleave even amount of moisture. And I think the overwhelming majority of the problems people have with this is either oversaturating the overlays um, or having a very uneven amount of water in them. And so this one uh, is, you know, okay. We can see it's absorbing. You're getting a little bit of that matte finish in there, a little bit of gloss, um, and then it didn't beat up too bad. Uh, James at Key Issue Collectibles figured something out, and it was a really good observation. So he takes his sheets of paper and he hits them with water uh, ahead of time, which is what I have here, and lets them air dry. And when you do that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, the, the pores open up, uh, just a hand wavy thing here. I think the water breaks some of the hydrogen bonding in the cellulose fibers, and you get a little bit more pocket and breathing room. Um, and also, if you have that glossy finish, and you don't want that glossy finish, you want cheap matte paper, you don't want it to look shiny at all. Uh, usually, the shinier and the higher quality of the paper, the more likely it is to beat up. So my advice is to go get the cheap, cheap copy paper. Um, don't buy anything fancy. Don't get HP high quality printer or anything like that. Um, get the cheap stuff. 
But anyway, uh, the subsequent exposure of a wetted and dried sheet of paper seems to do a little bit better. And I have uh, here acrylic sheets. These are nothing fancy. Uh, it doesn't really matter what size you get. I've got about three different sizes and two different thicknesses that I bought at various times and accidentally misordered. Um, the important thing is it's just something to be able to lay down your overlay on. All right, so here I have my 3% hydrogen peroxide. The Amazing Spider-Man 316 is a uh, modern book, and so I'm going to be okay exposing this to our 3% hydrogen peroxide. For older Silver Age books, um, I tend to restrict this to 1.5% hydrogen peroxide. Um, so there we go. So this is now, and you can see just visually, it absorbed that a lot better than that fresh sheet of paper. And so again, reach out to James at Kyushu Collectibles. He's the, uh, the person that figured that out. Okay, so um, one of the other things James figured out is that you really want that water to have time to seep into the overlay and you want to be able to give it an opportunity to really even out. Um, and this is one of the tricks we've had to avoid some of the common missteps or problems with this, the most common of which is what we call tiger striping, where you get uneven whitening and you'll get stripes of white and stripes of orange and then stripes of white and then stripes of orange. Uh, and that's from the overlay separating. Um, but if it's doing that, odds are good it was way too wet to begin with. So you want to dial back that moisture and humidity. Um, but if we look here, we can see that, you know, it has a nice matte look to it. So I'm just going to try to move this in the, in the glare there a little bit. It doesn't look like there's a lot of water pooled on there. And it doesn't look like the water is beaded up. It's definitely absorbed into that overlay quite nicely. And so that's more or less what we're going for here. Um, now, one of the other things James figured out is you do want to give it that rest time. You know, you don't have to, he, he, he lets his go for a couple of minutes. I, I'm impatient and I tend to let mine only go for, you know, maybe 20 seconds or so. Basically the amount of time that you've been watching me set this up. So, um... One of the things I do to try to help mitigate any overexposure is I'm going to put it on something. Uh, generally, I get a stack of old paper and I just put it on the old paper and use that old paper to wick it off. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use my, my towel here instead, but in my actual workspace, which isn't nearly as photogenic, um, I have a whole pile of old paper I just dab it on. All right, so that's good. You know, you don't want it dripping wet, and you'll notice if I pick this up here, it is not dripping. So that's kind of our key consideration there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and take my Amazing Spider-Man 316 here with an absolutely disgusting back cover. And I'm going to take this now moist, but not dripping wet overlay. I'm just going to gently whoop, slide it on over there. There we go. And uh, if you see this, that's a bad sign. So that means there's too much water there. So if you see it pooling, um, what we're going to do is dab this thing a little bit more. Um, you shouldn't see it absorb into the comic book. And, you know, it made contact there, but I don't see it puddling. But if you see drops forming or if you see it really sticking um, to the comic book, that's bad. And I spend more time than I should, you know, just gently dabbing this off. You want it to make contact and you want it to make a nice look there. There we go. That looks a lot better. All right. And then I push it down, but you can see, you know, we're not having a lot of clear glassy look. If you get a whole bunch where it goes clear and kind of has that glassy look, that means it's too wet. So here, you know, as you look at that, it looks matte, right? It, do it doesn't look like it's popping out at you. There are a couple of streaks right in here where you're getting a little bit of that. That'll probably be fine, particularly on a modern book. All right. So this is our, our overlay now. It's been wetted it's been partially dried and what we're now going to do is just drop it in the light box and that's pretty much going to be it so i have a separate video on how i set up my light box so go ahead i'll put that in the links there but i just put that cgc tray right right in like so and i'm going to arrange my my lights right over the top and i discussed this rail system here uh, in that video. And then I also use uh, just straight up aluminum foil uh, because it's cheap and ev everybody can get some. It's not that sophisticated. You gotta be patient with me here while I do this. And then I just usually put a third one right over the top, like so. So there you go, there's our light box. We can turn this on off. Oh, there we 
we go, I'll turn this on off. And then we can go ahead and kick this. Um, I use, again, the remote control I have here. So I have mine set on Christmas tree light timers. And I'm just going to click that two hour button. And, you know, there it is. So I'm going to let that jam right out of the comic book CPR book. Uh, that thing's going to go for about two hours. I hit the two hour button here on the, the remote. So there we go. Um, and, you know, and then that to me is one treatment. So overall, the treatment is setting it up and humidifying it getting that overlay set up, putting it in the light box, and then I let it go two hours because that's what I have here. Uh, realistically, you can go anywhere from uh, about 90 minutes to two hours. So if I have a whole bunch of client books and I'm home over the weekend, um, you know, I'll set my watch for 90 minutes instead of uh, 120 minutes and I'll go turn them every 90 minutes. I don't see that having a negative impact, but because I'm, you know, I have a nine to five job and I'm doing this between other stuff. I'll set it up before work with a two hour time point and I'll set it up before bed with a two hour time point and I'll let it run, you know, from 10 p.m. till midnight and I'll let it run from eight o'clock when I leave for work till 10 a.m. when I'm not home and it'll turn itself off. And so this to me is a, a really worthwhile gadget to get. Um, I'm just going to turn that on off there. Um, so yeah, that's basically the trick. And again, make sure you pick up the stain removal and whitening book. Also, please leave a thumbs up on the video here. Click that subscribe button right down below. And of course, don't feel uh, shy about leaving a comment on Facebook or Instagram. So take care, everybody. All right, I just wanted to give you a quick after look here at this book. This one now has gotten plenty of blue LED on the front cover, which, you know, I had kind of mentioned, and it had gotten some on the interior cover. And now what we can see here is that this matches a lot closer. You know, it's still not a perfectly white cover, but it definitely does not look as disgusting as it did. And if you look at the interiors, it looks a lot closer uh, front and back than, than what it did before. So this one now is going to get uh, a final press. So you can see that it has that characteristic wrinkle. And we're going to send this one to CGC uh, just to make sure it comes on back with the desired blue label. So again, it's not going to be a, you know, 98 book. We can see that, you know, it's got some damage to the corner. It's got a little crease down there. And it has a little bit of uh, a finger bend slash scuff mark right there by Venom. But all in all, this one looks a whole heck of a lot better and we're gonna come back and check it on out later. So stay tuned to the channel for the CGC submission and unboxing for that one. It'll probably be a while. I wanted to get the blue LED one out. A lot of people asked for the blue LED one. Uh, click that subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and again, you know, you can see the heck of a difference that the process made overall, particularly on that interior cover. So.